you know, cancer. Cancer is a very, very rare disease. Not really rare, but when it comes down to a cure. Cancer just eat at the fabrics of my soul and my life. Unpredictable, undefining. Look at me, we know that I'm diagnosed with a malignant terminal cancer. Malignant means there's no cure. Terminal means that I'm being terminated by a disease. I lost all my teeth. Got 13 teeth left from the chemotherapy. I took 42 treatments of chemo, 42 treatments of radiation. My chest was burnt black in the front. My side was burnt, burnt black. Center of my back was burnt black from the radiation. I took 42 treatments of radiation. And I went almost bald. I got down to a hundred and three pounds. That's with my clothes off. 105, 107 with my clothes on. My normal weight was 220, 225. People, people that were my relatives that hadn't seen me in a long time. I hadn't, didn't know I had gotten diagnosed with cancer when they saw me, they didn't even know who I were. It looked like I had lost my identity. I'm an artist and I do a lot of painting and drawings. But to be diagnosed with a malignant terminal cancer, knowing that I was given two to six months to live, and then my life expectancy was five years, and I'm in remission right now. And by being in remission, that means that I'm kept for free right at the moment. But they, 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 they removed my, my stomach, my pancreas. And I would pull my shirt up and show you where he cut me all the way from here down and took my stomach out. So to show that I'm not lying, this is where they cut me all the way from here down. And they took out my, my they removed my stomach and took out my pancreas moved my heart over, and they cut that tube behind my heart. Those were some devastating months that I went through. And then I got diagnosed with pneumonia, walking pneumonia, and just having a, it seemed to be having a field day with it, with life. Um, but yet I stayed encouraged. I got friends like George Boston Ryan who, who, who inspires me, that, 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 that adds a positive point to my life you know, by doing things, standing up for others when others won't stand up for themselves. There's another form of cancer, and that form is called racism, to be a black man in America. is nothing compared to what I just described as for this cancer that I live with each and every day. It seems as if the black man and the black male seem like he's, he, he's on a death row situation in his everyday walk of life. Seem like he faces the ultimate council of all by the, the police departments. It seems like they, they, they out to get us when it comes down to males from, from the age of 16 or, or I'm going to say from the age of 13 to the age of 38, maybe 40, early, late 40s. And how it looked like so many of us die in every so many hours throughout this, throughout this great nation. Now I say great nation, what's so great about America? What, 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 what's so great? I mean, the question I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself now, what is so great about America? Is it just because it's got a democracy? A democracy for who? I mean, who is it really for? Yeah, ask yourself that question. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it for you, black man? Do you really truthfully believe it's for you? You better get at another recall to your mind. Or is it because of an empire he made off of your ancestors? Free labor from this old harsh cancer that cancel racism throughout this country. Is it so hard for you to believe that, that you've been broke from your culture, 
and to be adopted to adapt. Adopted to adapt. Adopted to adapt to a European culture. Not to be an orchestrator of it, but to be a victim like I'm a victim of this cancer. I didn't ask for this, neither did you. Did none of us ask for none of this. But yet, we are plagued with the malignant disease. That's malignant. Believe it or not, you're in the same situation. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I was diagnosed with a terminal malignant esophageal cancer. You were simply diagnosed with the cancer of racism. That you want to believe that you're free. Free from what? This great nation. Great because of what? Because of who? Is it because of you? Or is it because of the, of the, the struggle of a race? Are we going to make any progress? Are we going to sit back on our asses? Not our donkeys. Are we going to sit back and allow this to keep continuing to occur? Are we going to continue to be slapped down, stepped upon, walked across, and get up and say, I forgive you because you still master? Are we going to keep that mentality? Are we going to do something about it? Are we going to allow the sheriff's department to keep shooting us down? And we go down and and we sang the old song, we shall overcome. Overcome what? You don't overcame that part of the, of the game. We don't overcome that. We, we passed that now. Why don't we wake up and, and realize we are past that age now. We are past that. And face the facts of reality, it's time for us to produce some results. And results is not just standing still. It's not just standing inside for a man pull your teeth and you scared to pull his. A man knock out your eye, you, 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 you too forgiving to knock out his. I know that sound like, sound like that's, that's evil, that's not evil. That's just the facts of life. I'm, at, I'm, I'm in my backyard at my home, and I'm a minister. If a thief come in this driveway and kick my door in, I'm going to shoot him down. I'm not going to go up to my Bible and say, please, sir, in the name of Jesus, get out. I'm going to take that 45 and I'm going to escort him to I'm going to get escort him to the cemetery, if necessary. God told me he'll forgive me for everything except self-murder and blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, and I believe that. And I'm not speaking no evil intent, but I'm not about playing no game. It's time for you to wake up, or this council gonna eat you alive. It's gonna eat you alive. I don't really care. This bottom line. Here I am, I, 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 let me walk up a little closer. I was diagnosed with a malignant, I mean no cure, Terminal means that I'm being terminated. Cancer, something that eats at you. So I really don't really care. Now, be bottom line, you want to really know the truth? I really don't. But I'm intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes the difference. I'm intelligent. And I got understanding with that intelligence to overrule my don't care. I know there's a God out there, and I'm a minister, and I'm going, I'm going to continue to minister the truth. And the truth is the light. You cannot continuously sit around and allow these people to keep running over you, making you believe that you is his servant, that you got to clock in on his job, and you can't own the job that he's working on. You got just as much right as he do. Just as much right. You're not asking, you're not begging, you're demanding. You got something to offer. I'm not talking about the ones who've been, who've been brainwashed, bamboozled to sell drugs on our streets. I'm not. not I'm against him and her. Uh, I'm not talking about the one that go up and drop a drawers and, and take a dress up high and, and get in the games of prostitution. I'm against her. And then I'm on the line. My, my thing is to preach redemption to them, but to have intelligence with what you do. This, this is not a game. I'm tired of every time I ride down the street and I go to show one of my friends, look at this building we got and it belonged to a white man or an Indian. I'm sick of that. Every time I look around, I see black businesses trying to thrive, and every time I go to talk to them, I'm the representative of the Black Business Association, and every business that I talk to can't get capital. I'm sick and tired of that. I go sit down and talk with a bank where we have a black representative for a blank perspective, and they go to talking about the rules and the regulations and the laws which exclude all my brothers. I'm sick and tired of that. When are we going to wake up to realize that we got to do for ourselves? Redirect the funds. Quit spending your money. Look, 
I don't have to like Charlie because you feel like I should. Charlie don't have to like me. But me and Charlie gonna live in this world together. And I'm not taking that off of Charlie. And Charlie might not take it off of me. What that mean? That means it might be it might not be no peace between me and Charlie. If it's not no peace, what it mean? Mean war. I told you, I frankly don't care. Now I'm gonna do good because I decided to, not because I have to, Doc. I decided I chose to do right. Not that I have to. And I could kill him as quick as he could kill me. And I mean just that. In there lies the same thing that lies in all men. We can do anything our heart desires, but can we live with it? That's the big question. You don't know until you do it. But it's in you. Both ways, right and wrong, good and evil. I chose to make my mind up. I chose the decision in the direction I want to go. And I chose to follow the path, even if it's a religious path. Those little voices you hear behind me are the voices of little children. Because I want them to have a future, for something to be right for them, so that they can make it in this world. I chose to go this route, not because nobody's making me do anything. I can take my, I can take, I can take my 45, I can take my automatic 38, I can take any gun. I got guns in this house, man. I do. And I also got the word of God in this house. And it's not because I'm compelled to do. I'm doing this because this is what I decided to do. I'm a black man in America born in free moment of good reproof. My grandmother and my grandfather died on this American shore, right here. My ancestors died, free labor, and ain't, we ain't get nothing out of it. Here we got a thriving business downtown, refurbishing dumpsters. We, we could build garbage truck, be building every part to a garbage truck, refurbishing. And this city here won't give us not one thing to do. Why? Because we stand up against them. And guess what? They got the Uncle Tom and the James and plant. They got their plants here in the city. This city of got us. But we're going to turn this city upside down with righteousness because we are not scared. We are not cowards. We are not Uncle Tums. And all of those who sit in the pulpits, this is the truth, that, 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 is, that represent their communities and not doing the thing they should do for their communities and not singing this song, this gospel. What, what gospel are they preaching? An ill preaching? The preaching of a European culture that you are made to believe that you got to work for somebody. You got to be on the time clock. You got, you got to get him struggle every day in your life for someone else to, to live a good life and you live by the crumbs that fall from that table. It, it, this, this, this ain't no good. We got to do better than this. Yes, I was diagnosed. I, must, I, I got to keep saying this. I was diagnosed with a malignant terminal esophageal cancer. And I had raised my shirt and showed you where they cut me open, moved my heart over, and cut my, cut my esophagus tube behind my heart. I had bags on my side to pull off drain blood. 17 inch tube put inside of me. And I, and I had to battle on this six, for several months. So I understand the agony of pain. And I, and I hurts now when I eat. It, it reminds me what I go through. So I know you hurt when, when, when you got to eat this garbage that they dumping on you for life. You see? And this man standing behind me here, this man is an, inspira is, is, is an inspirator to me. He showed me that he cares about other people and he are not scared. He is not afraid to tell the things that the Vettos of Daily News and Times won't tell. It's hell in America to be a black man, my friend. Yes, sir, it is. It is, Doc. And he don't need us kidding about it. Doc, I appreciate you, man, because today, Lord, no, you laid it on us, man. It's, 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 I don't know what. I told you I got up this morning. Come on, folks. Mm. I told you I got up this morning. I don't know what it is, but it's like something in the air, man. It is. I don't understand it. Uh, but black people can't continue like this, man. We can't, Doc. We just can't do it. We 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 done it 497 and years. It's the end of everything. This, uh, this year, 497 years. It's the end. It's the end. The whole thing. That's then. right. Yes, sir. It got to come to an end, brother. Uh, it's amazing how white police officers is shooting down black people, our mm. black children. Yes, sir. The black police officer got the same 38, That's the right. same nine millimeter. That's right. They ain't killing black, white folk like 
black, like white police killing our children. Like we swap flags. So, so maybe our black police officers may need to understand that a cell phone now is considered to be a gun. Yes, sir. So when they use they whites use their cell phone, they might need to mistake it as a gun. They just shot a guy nine times over the way, way across. I That's went over right. there and recorded. I got it on video. That's right. That's right. Just in Macon, Georgia, 2010, they shot Miss Renee McGee, uh, son, threw him in the water. The GBI didn't do what they're supposed to do. That's right. GBI didn't do what they're supposed to do in Brooks County with equipment 10 plus 2. So the GBI didn't do what they're supposed to do with Willie Jane Williams' death. So when KJ asked about the GBI and what they did to in that, you can see why they would be outraged. Right. It's something wrong. Something wrong, Doc. And we got to make it right. And you, you're so right. You are so, you absolutely so right. We are tired. We're tired. Yes, sir. See, this disease is eating at us. Just like this disease is eating on me. It's, 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 this, this disease is worse than what I'm facing, man. Yes, sir. It is. A, a young man go to school and don't return, and then now, then. Then we get all the, then we get all these other voices. Yes, sir. And then I listen to it on radio, fellowstoday.com. I listen to all these people who act as if though black life is like it was with the Dred Scott decision, 1857, that no black man had any rights that a white man had to res respect. That's what it seemed like. But I was talking to a young man this morning, and he said, "The hell with marching. The hell." Protesting. I agree. He said, "The hell with all looking and praying to a God too high and a hell too low." That's what he's talking about this morning. Mm -hmm. And he said, "The only thing people can understand is violence, and they have to realize that with God on our side, we can't lose. We done. We had to fight just to use the bathroom, yeah. and we won. See, the problem." We have, we won't form a cartel. Yes, sir. That's the problem with black America has. Mm -hmm. See, everybody else got it but black America. Mm -hmm. See, they're they so afraid of that coming to America, to black America. See, once we come together and organize ourselves, we ain't got to take it down. Well, Doc, the revolution won't be televised. Because no. the Black Panthers, brother uh, Malik Shabazz mm -hmm. was in town. Last week. That's right. But no news media, media sitting in the back, but I did. Right. And they are here because they go across the nation. And black folk got to understand something. They got to understand that nobody tell us who our friends going to be anymore. That's right. We got a right to claim a pigeon as our friend if we want to. Well, my brother, see, the way it is with us right now, all our friends, Except our brothers, our true brothers. All our friends, other than our true brothers, run cars, holler at the moon, and piss on trees. Yes, sir. You see? Well, other than that, see, us, we, we true brothers. Yes, sir. See? We are true brothers. True brothers. Peace, brother. You know, and, and that's what makes the real difference. See, this brother came to my aid this morning. Just this, this, this morning. When I couldn't do something for myself, he come and did it for me. He said, my brother, I said, I had it not. He said, but I had it for you. And we were able to make the, 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 the day a very successful day. You know, I'm going to say this again. I keep repeating this. I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed with a malignant, no cure, terminal esophageal cancer. And I'm in remission right now. And think about the kind of mind frame I must be in. Knowing that any day now, I could be... This thing come back on me, they told me I got six to eight weeks at the most, at the most. Knowing that any day now, this thing can spring up on me in the middle of the night, right now after we get through talking, and it, and it can activate. Now think about the kind of frame of mind I must be in. So therefore, I can understand the frame of mind that you are in, my brother, because you is being diagnosed with a malignant terminal illness with racism, and you, it is terminal. And it has determined that your reward is death. Not by a justice we are called by God, because that your mind, the old folks said, they, they call it adder. Your mind has been adder. 
put that in, in, in the layman's term in, in, in uh, Ebonics, that means that you have been brainwashed. That means that, that, that you have been enslaved in thought to believe in something that have no use for you. To believe in something that have no use for you. None other than to use you up and teach you through its religion that you were the son of Ham and say that all the Ham's children was cursed. Which is a lie. That's a lie. You lie from the pits of hell. You understand? But when you're ignorant, you can't defend it. But when you get into the ancient knowledge of truth, mm -hmm. then you walk superior and you walk above all that garbage. That's right, Doc. And that, uh, that, 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 that's going to finalize what I'm saying is that you have been diagnosed with a malignant terminal illness. And it's going to carry you to your grave. And you don't have to take nothing from anybody. You can do anything the next man can do. If he can pick up a stick, so can you. If he can pick up a marble, so can you. If he can pick up a dollar, you should be able to, but he got you barred from that. You see? But if he can pick up a gun, so can you. If he can pull the trickle, so can you. Now, where did it say? It said that you should be forgiven for anything except blaspheming against the Holy Spirit and self-murder. That means all the rest, they set up the laws that you could plead to the fifth, that you ain't never got to testify against yourself to nothing to incriminate you. So don't go ahead and start fessing up to anything. Use the intellect that God gave you as a black man and realize that you were wanted species even to death, and in many cases after death. And concerning the death of KJ, the half haven't been told. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. We're doing what we do because somebody got to do it. Though we suffer and though we die by the blood of the Lamb, we shall overcome. Blessed are they, which they that die in the name of the Lord, for they shall rest from their labor. Heaven and earth, will pass away, but God will, will stand forever. And we don't have to apologize for speaking the truth, whether it be on Chris Beckham's show, Hannity, or the rest of the reverse Christians and patriots of this dispensation. They look like they are giving off a light, but when the light goes out, we are left in darkness as we have never seen before. Bye-bye. We go.